يقول راجع عفو رب سامعي محمد بن الجزاري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا وتقبلا يا رحمة رحمة Is it annoying or fine in your side? It's fine? Fine? Okay So we continue in الجزرية 44 by Allah سبحانه وتعالى's blessings منظومة المتكلمة على قارئ القرآن أن يعلمه من نظم الإمام الخطاب وحجة الخضاء سيدنا الإمام ابن الجزري رحمه الله تعالى. So we started باب التجويد. This is الباب الرابع section number four which is on تجويد. Means the definition of تجويد, the importance of تجويد, the rulings of تجويد and some other some other issues. So what does الإمام ابن الجزري say رحمه الله? As you can see on the screen, والأخذ بالتجويد. This is line twenty seven, right? والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم. so we said الأخذ بالتجويد means what means what يا شيخ الأخذ بالتجويد means what implementing تجويد applying تجويد literally it means taking right so but I said I told you this is a term الأخذ ب Something means applying or implementing something. Well, أخذ بالتجويد حتم means لازم, necessary, important, mandatory. من لم يصحح القرآن آثم. من لم يصحح whoever does not correct. Correct what? Correct the Quran? No. Means correct his recitation of the Quran. Is آثم. آثم means what? آثم means a sinner, right? But here I want you to add just before we will explain in details, but just here to put some restrictions for this line. Whoever does not correct his recitation of the Quran by whoever does not correct his by by making making mistakes that change the meaning or the error, then the line will be Completely correct and precise. So, مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ means what? The one who makes mistakes that change the meaning or the i'rab. Is that clear? Yeah. Let's add the, the, these this sentence under مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ. So, مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ is a sinner. Who is that? Who is a sinner? Anyone who does not correct. His recitation in the Quran, in what sense? Like someone who doesn't apply ikhfa or in what sense? We're going to come to the details now, but for the line, just to have, to have the, the, just in one sentence, you say, the one who doesn't or the one who makes mistakes that change the meaning or the Arab is a sinner. And also there are details for that. We're going to learn them now, inshallah. Last thing we said, tartil tajweed al-huruf wa ma'rifat al why, why uh, we have to apply tajweed? Because Imam Ibn Jazir said in the next line, لِأَنَّهُ بِهِ الْإِلَاهُ أَنْزَلَ Because the Qur'an, لِأَنَّهُ the Qur'an, بِهِ means by, by tajweed, with tajweed, الْإِلَاهُ the God, the Creator, أَنْزَلَ Because by tajweed or with tajweed, Allah revealed the Qur'an. وَهَكَذَا and this or thus مِنْهُ mean from Allah إِلَيْنَا to us وَصَلَ arrived and this is how it came to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means what? with tajweed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran we're going to explain that line again later 
Oh, this is just a quick to connect the two lines. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلَ Surah Al-Muzzammir, right? Means what? رَتِّل The Arabs, they say, ثَغُرْ مُرَتَّل What do they say? ثَغُرْ مُرَتَّل means a mouth that has teeth that are distinct from each other, not like one teeth above the other. No, these teeth are distinct from each other and every teeth is in its right place. So the Arabs, they would describe such a mouth, مُرَتَّل And now, if you go on, on, on the internet and you, you write Qur'an مُرَتَّل then you have some, some recordings. So you write مُرَتَّل The Qur'an مُرَتَّل the Arabs say ثَغَرْ مُرَتَّل So what does مُرَتَّل mean or تَرْتِيل? Means you pronounce every letter from its right makhraj with its right sifat and you make it distinguished from the other letter. And also tartil means tartil means slowly and distinctly, distinctively. Uh, and taqra'ahu ala ta'uda means slowly. You read the Quran slowly so that why? So that every letter, every letter will come out clear and distinct from the other letters. You don't mix the letters. That is tartil in, in, the, in the language. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not also, did not only say waratil al-Qur'an, he said tartila. This is called ta'keed bil masdar. This is maf'ul mutlaq. They say tartila maf'ul mutlaq. For example, they say qatta'atu tuffahata taqti'a. I cut the apple taqti'a. When you add this word, which is, which is, uh, a gerund, okay, means you're emphasizing the verb. Okay, you're emphasizing the verb. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized this command. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا Recite the Qur'an with tartil means what? Slowly and with distinct and melodious tone. It has all these meanings. In a way, how can we do that? By pronouncing every letter from its right place with its right sifat. That is, that is tartil. So tajweed is part of tartil. If you want to do tartil correctly, you have to apply tajweed, right? You have to apply tajweed. So this is where we stop. We mentioned the definition of Sayyidina Ali, or that's attributed to Sayyidina Ali about tartil, which is what? Tajweed al-huruf wa ma'rifat al So tajweed means literally what? Who remembers? Tajweed means what? Hmm? Tajweed. You were here, right? In the language. To make something. To make something. Good. Good. Means jawada. To make something jayyid. Right, like tahsin, improvement, to make something hasan, right? Now, in the, in the uh, tajweed terminology, or in the uh, Islamic terminology, what is tajweed? I gave you the definition, I remember at the end of the class, right? Who remembers? Is to read the Quran correctly. By what? Who, who can remind me of the definition I gave you? Did you write it? Who wrote it? Correct recitation by applying the makhraj sifat and all resulting rulings. Exactly. The juweed is to read the Quran correctly by applying, by applying the makharij of the letters or, in, or pronouncing the letters with their right makharij and their right sifat and applying the rules that results from and applying the resulting rules and applying the resulting rules the resulting rules of what? of connecting the letters with each other you have resulting rules, you have idgham naqis, you have idgham udhunna, you have ikhfa, etc. okay now Tajweed theoretically, Tajweed theoretically, 
is not was not present in the time of the Prophet as we know it today. They did not know oh, this is Idgham al this is Ikhfa, this is Ibhar, etc. etc. But it, of course they used to apply all of these rules in the best way, right? In the best way. And we said after the Arabs or after non-Arabs started accepting Islam and Islam started spreading, the Arabs were afraid about changing the sounds of the Quran. So what did the scholars do? They looked at the recitation of the qualified reciters and started noticing how they are pronouncing and taking down and writing those rules so that it will be, they will be taught to the coming generations so that the Quran will not change. Even before that, we have uh, the Arabic letters did not have harakat, did not have dots. The Arabic letters did not have harakat or dots in the past, in the beginning. There is a great, great Imam called Abu Aswad al Duali, Rahimahullah, anhu. May Allah be pleased with him and reward him and accept his efforts. He is one of the greatest scholars who served the Arabic language the most. Among the greatest scholars who served the Arabic language the most. He was uh, walking by uh, maybe one of the streets of Al Kufa in Iraq. So he heard someone reading, min Allahi wa rasulihi ila nasi yawm al hajj al akbari anna Allah bari'um min al mushrikina wa rasulihi. Astaghfirullah al azim. This is what he said. This is what he heard the man say. Which means that this is a declaration from Allah and His Messenger to people on the day of Hajj that Allah is, Allah is disowning the pagans and His Messenger. But what is the ayah? أن الله بريء من المشركين و ورسوله أن الله بريء من المشركين ورسوله but the man was reading ورسوله and it changed the meaning upside down and he said معاذ الله أن يتبرأ الله من رسوله he said no way أستغفر الله الله will never ever this on his messenger and from that moment he intended and, and uh, planned to make something to help people not make such mistakes in the recitation of the Quran is this clear so the meaning is very is very terrible why only because he changed and instead of saying he said just one haraka change the meaning upside down this is why he said, whoever does not correct his recitation of the Quran means whoever changes the meaning or the i'rab is a sinner. What does that mean? It means when the Muslim wants to recite the Quran, he has to learn recitation, not start like figuring it, figuring it out by himself or just trying by himself. He has to go to a teacher to learn the basic uh, things, how to recite correctly. And this doesn't need like, in one month you can learn. In one month. Even less. In 10 classes I taught one of the, of the uh, El Salvadorian brothers in Georgia. In 10 classes, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings, he learned how to recite correctly. In 10 classes. So, from scratch, from zero, from, from the alphabet. So, this is how Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu, he told Abu Aswad Du'ali already and guided him to do some, to put the grammar and to, to make these things and, and uh, by guidance of Sayyiduna Ali and direction of Sayyiduna Ali and through the efforts of Abu Aswad Du'ali rahimahullah, they started putting what? The harakat first. So the harakat were put first as they were put like dots. And we will see this later in the pictures, inshallah. The, the first came the dots or the harakat? The harakat. And they came like dots. Okay? Then later they put the, the dots for the letters and they changed 
the, the harakat into the signs that we know today. So the main reason of, of writing down these tajweed rules is what? Is the need for that in order to protect the Quranic recitation from change, especially by non-Arabs who started accepting Islam and might start reading the Quran in their own way. And that might change the meanings. And this is why the scholars, they put down these rules and the scholars and the teachers started teaching these rules. But the main reliance was what? The main reliance is you go to the teacher and you hear how the teacher is reading and you copy the teacher, right? But there must be written rules for, the, for people since there were much, much less number of teachers and a huge number of newcomers to Islam. This is, what, this, this is why the need was very, very urgent. Uh, so, Here you need to know that Al-Jazariya, uh, just like all poems in general, in general, when someone writes a poem, when someone writes a poem, sometimes they change. Even, I, I'm not a poet, but I wrote like, maybe 100 lines or more, particularly for my wife, or basically. And many times I change, sometimes I change. I put, I made a line, I made a verse, then later I find like a better word. So I start, and I already told my wife that way, then I, I have another way. So, and if I told some people, so people will get how many versions? They will get two versions of the same poem, right? And both are correct, but one of them is after the other or before the other. This is the same thing that happens with those great scholars. Sometimes they find a better word or they change it. So this is why you will find sometimes some versions of Al-Jazariya have one or two words different. And this line is an example. Some versions say, Malam yujawwidil Qur'ana afi. Malam yujawwidil Qur'ana afi. But Sheikh Ayman Suwayd chose this one. We are, we are following the, the Nuskha or the version that Sheikh Ayman worked on and authenticated and verified. Why he used, he said, he, he used this one which says مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِ And Sheikh Ayman himself, he saw a copy, a manuscript of Al-Jazariya in Turkey, in one of the museums in Turkey, and he found a license written a license written by Imam Ibn al-Jazari himself rahimahullah he licensed that copy of al-Jazariya or manuscript of al-Jazariya so this is a very authentic narration of al-Jazariya from taken from a very authentic manuscript so why he said man lam yusahih and then there he said man lam yujawid because if you say man lam yujawid al-Quran afinu maybe Imam al-Jazari changed it later to this word because if you say, Malam, and this is why Shaykh Ayman chose this one. Malam yujawwidil Qur'an afimu, you might understand that whoever does not apply all tajweed rules is a sinner. But that's difficult. That, that, that cannot be right. Because more, let's say, a huge amount of Muslims don't apply all tajweed rules. Right? Right? So you cannot say all of them are sinners. Uh, but when you say مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ It means whoever does not correct his recitation of the Qur'an means you can understand that whoever makes mistakes like major mistakes or mistakes that change the meaning. Got it? Why we have this version? So if someone tells you, you're reading Jazariya to someone and tells you No, no, it's مَنْ it's لَمْ يُجَوِّ What do you say? We say this is another authentic version that is authenticated by Sheikh Ibn Suwid and he saw the manuscript with his own eyes in the museum of, in Turkey and it has a certificate or a license on that manuscript it has a license by Imam Ibn Jazari himself means what someone wrote that manuscript and Imam Ibn Jazari verified it and licensed him or approved that manuscript is that clear? okay so now let's come to the rulings of learning Tajweed in details number one as we mentioned before if you remember we have مخارج الحروف and صفات الحروف, right? 
if someone changes the makhraj of the letter, what do you think? Will that change the meaning? If someone changes the makhraj of the letter, does that change the meaning? Of course. No, not sometimes, all the time. Because when you change the letter into another letter, changing the makhraj means you change the letter into another letter. So that will definitely change the meaning. Sometimes nonsensical meaning, a meaning that doesn't have a sense. Or sometimes it has a sense but wrong meaning and other than the original meaning. The point is changing the makhraj changes the meaning. Is that right? Of course. This is why. So now we're explaining the rulings of learning Tajweed in details. So we first because we cannot say, anyone who doesn't apply Tajweed is a sinner. What do you mean? Applying what in particular? Sifat or Makharil or what in particular? Right? So, I'm going to start writing the questions now for the test. So be ready. So one of the questions, the first question I told you, Is what? The difference between Man Lam Yusahihil Quran and Man Lam Yujawidil Quran. Because this is you're learning Jazariya, someone will tell you, ah, oh, it's not Man Lam Yusahih. How do you reply? You have to explain to them as a teacher, right? As a someone who's certified in Jazariya. Because when you're inshallah done. You're not going to take the ijazah unless you, you pass the tests. And if you pass the tests of al jazariya means you've learned al jazariya I'm going to give you a certificate in al jazariya as well. Inshallah. So, you have to know al jazariya right? You have to know why it's man lam yusahih. So, now the first ruling, and this is absolutely will be a question. The details, the detailed ruling of, of, Learning Tajweed. So you cannot just tell me, ah, uh, you have to learn it or just a general word. No, you have to give this details that I'm going to explain now. Number one, learning Makharij al Huruf is mandatory on every single Muslim who recites the Quran. It means what? It means pronouncing every letter as it is in Arabic. As it is in Arabic is mandatory, is an obligation. On every single Muslim. Is that clear? Now, someone should say, Oh, what about those people who say Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman ar Rahim? Those who change the Ha into a Ha and the Ain into Hamza, and those who say Walad Dalin, they cannot pronounce these letters. What, 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 should, we, what should they do? They cannot. We say they have to learn and put some time to learn. Then, if they cannot, that's fine. Allah subhanahu wa taala will not will not bring them to account if they did their best, right, Sheikh? But if they don't care, right? If they don't care, they think no, I'm fine. Come on, make religion is easy. Allah is forgiving. Allah is ghafur rahim. Don't make things difficult. Yeah, I'm not going to make things difficult, but you put time for, for so many things in your life that are not necessary. You're not willing to put time to learn the recitation of, of Allah's book, to read it correctly. So Allah will bring you to account for that. So we say the Muslim who has problems with some letters, some Arabic letters, we say you have to, to do your best and to try. Then, if you cannot pronounce some letters, Allah will not overburden you. And now, should he recite the Quran or no? Yes, of course. Recite the Quran Allah will, and Allah will reward you. But, don't go online and make yourself an online teacher and teach people. Don't come in the masjid and go forward to lead salah. As some people do now here and there in some masajid. Someone 
One time, he's, I was standing and, he, and someone made a comment and he just came forward and started Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He just singing, exactly singing. So right away, I told him after Salah, please, brother, you should not leave Salah this way. You should see if there are people who are qualified, let them leave and try to learn because you cannot leave this way. And Alhamdulillah, he did not leave since then. I did not see him leaving there. But now I heard, mashallah, he's. Uh, Leading somewhere else. That's because of the because of the negligence of, of those who are in charge of the of the masajid or of some masajid. Not anyone just can go forward and because he has nice voice or because like uh, he's a teacher, whatever, whatever. The point is, if you have problems with some letters, you go not, do not go and teach. Well, I have to. I like to volunteer. I like to volunteer and teach kids in Sunday school. I like to sit and make a program for the youth and let them read. Come on, no, no, it's not that simple. That is a responsibility. You're teaching them wrong. You cannot teach them something else that you know. Something that you don't know, don't teach. There is one exception where he can lead. Who can tell me? Someone who has problems with the letters can lead Salah. In what case? If all the people who are present, they are worse than you. Means their recitation is worse. Then you can lead. Is that clear? Other than this, you should dare not. Right? You should dare not. Is that correct grammatically, English? You should dare not. Huh? How do you say it? You should dare not do it. Is that right? Huh? You don't know English? I'm asking you. Huh? It sounds right. It sounds right? Okay, alhamdulillah. So, you should dare not do it, right? You should dare not do it. So, that is the first rule. Is it clear? Brothers, sisters, is it clear? Okay, so this way, this way, we urge the Muslims to learn Tajweed, right? to learn the recitation of the Qur'an. At the same time, we tell them that Allah will not overburden you. As long as you do your best, okay. We, make, we announce many programs, many, I make many free classes for people, open for the community. Sometimes no one shows up. So we give the, the chances are there. But if you don't care, then you have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the first rule. Now, the second rule is Sifat al -hul. Is what? Is Sifat al -hul. Who can tell me now? If you change the Sifa of the letter, or you don't apply the Sifa of the letter, will that change the meaning? What do you think? There are two types of sifat. If I say khalidin, khalidin, is it like, does it change the meaning? If I say khalidin, khalidin, does it change the meaning? No. So this sifa, when you're applying this sifa, or missing the sifa, which is the heaviness of the kha, it didn't change the meaning. While, while, if I say That's right If I change the ta into a ta And I say Talaq means meeting The day of meeting When people will meet all of them And they will meet their deeds And meet their Lord And be brought to account If you change it the ta into a ta means you change the heaviness, the lightness of the ta, and you made it heavy. So changing that sifa, did it change the letter or not? It did. Did it change the meaning? Yes. A is divorce. The day of judgment is not the day of divorce, it's the day of talaq, not talaq. Right? So, 
At-talaq marratan. If you instead of saying At-talaq marratan, you say At-talaq. Meeting is two times. You can meet two times only. So talaq means meeting. Talaq means divorce. So there are, so when we talk about sifat al-huruf, we have what? To differentiate between two categories. The sifat that do not change the letter if not applied. And the sifat that change the letter. Is that clear? Clear? Okay. Yalla. What is the ruling of the changing the sifat or not applying the sifat that it changes the letter into another letter? What is the ruling, Yashi, of learning those sifat? Just like, just like Makharij, right? Because this sifat is changing the letter. When you are skipping it, it's changing the letter into another letter. So what do you have to do? You have to, you have to apply it. And if you skip it, that's haram. That's not permissible. And you have to learn it. Right? Is that clear, guys? Now, what, what about the sifat? The sifat that do not change the letter into another letter. And those sifat, we call them Decorative sifa. Is that correct? Decorative, decorative, or decorative? Huh? First time you hear this word? Huh? Beautifying sifa. Sifa just to beautify the letter. This is how the Arabs. It's understood when you say khalidin, but it doesn't sound nice. It is kha, khalidin. So sifa that don't change the letter but are important just for the beauty of the sound of the letter. So decorative sifat or beautifying sifat we call it. What is the ruling of learning those sifat al -huruf? Those attributes of the letters that do not change the letter into another letter if not applied. But they just make the letter more nice, more beautiful to hear. Okay? What is the, the ruling of learning those sifat? Here also we have to differentiate between two cases. If this person who is reading, he is just reading by himself for himself. Okay? Then, there are two, two possibilities. If he knows those rules and, and rulings, it's not good, it's makruh for him. Is very disliked. Is very disliked. Is not acceptable. See the words I'm using. I'm trying not to say haram, right? I did not say haram, right? Is not acceptable from someone who knows talqala uh, and he doesn't apply it. Is not nice. Why? Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ read this way. So why are you changing his way? This is how Allah revealed the Qur'an to him. And this is how he taught it to his companions. And this is how thousands and thousands and thousands of Muslim scholars dedicated their whole lives to transfer the Holy Qur'an to us with this, with all of these rules. Then why are you careless about them? That's not acceptable. If someone, a normal Muslim, doesn't know these rules, okay, doesn't know these rules, we say he, he, left what is best tarak al akim is not making a sin but he he lost he lost a greater reward won't you get a greater reward if you apply all the rules and try to recite the quran like the prophet of course yes so when you don't care you're losing some rewards right you're losing rewards so that ruling if someone is just reading by himself for himself to skip those sifat or attributes of the letters that do not change the letter into another letter is, is if you know the rules, is, is makruh, is not acceptable. If you don't know them, then you lost what is best. Now, what if someone is 
trying to get an ijazah from someone trying to get a license in the Quran whether he knows those sifat or no it's forbidden completely forbidden to skip those rules means what means it's complete completely forbidden and a big sin if someone certifies someone and gives an ijazah or license to someone if that one does not apply these rules or does not know them doesn't matter if he not doesn't know them or doesn't apply them in either cases it's completely forbidden to give him a license or an ijazah why who knows why why who can tell me why because ijazah huh? not why not because of that, because ijazah means what? Ijazah means you're giving him a license that he read the Quran to you as you read it to your teachers and as your teachers read it to his teacher, to his teacher, back to our beloved Prophet So if you give him the ijazah and he did not read to you as you really read to your teacher, then you're lying. And that's a major sin. Did you get it, guys? I will definitely ask you about this. Because this is something you must know. You must know as a person who is seeking an ijazah and as someone who, who insha'Allah will be giving ijazah. Is that clear? Now what about idgham, ikhfa, the other rules. Now we talk about what here guys? Makharij and, makharij and sifat, right? What about, what about the other tajweed rules? Huh? What about the other Tajweed rules? They are just like those decorative sifat. The rulings of learning and applying the other Tajweed rules like idgham, uh, like noon sakina rules, beam sakina rules, mad rules, and the other detailed rules. Learning them is just like learning those sifat that do not change the meaning. Any question? Is that clear? Any question, guys? How much time now on the camera? 36. 36. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, we'll leave Aqid inshallah to next time. Inshallah next time we'll I'll start 10 sharp. Even if there if there's no one here, I will start at 10. Inshallah, I'm gonna start the recording. I'm gonna start at 10 sharp, inshallah, so that we we don't skip the the Aqida class. So now let's take these 15 more minutes. Any questions so far? Is it clear? That is the detailed rulings of learning, of learning Tajweed with all of its rules. Let's look at the screen and review this one last time before we move on. Of course, it's in Arabic. I'm just gonna explain to you what Sheikh Ibn Mi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him with. So learning, the ruling of learning Tajweed. The ruling of learning Tajweed. The ruling of applying Tajweed rules. As we mentioned, the main foundation of Tajweed is to pronounce the Arabic letters correctly. And that is what, that, that includes Makharij al-Huruf and Sifat al-Huruf. Makharij al-Huruf and Sifat al-Huruf. So the first section, if you can see, Makharij al-Huruf, Al-Iltizamu biha wajibun wal-ikhlalu wal-ikhlalu biha haramun mutlaqa. Applying the Makharij al-Huruf correctly is mandatory. And skipping them is completely forbidden. Or totally forbidden. Means no exceptions. The only exception is for who? For those who do their best but cannot, cannot pronounce. He cannot say the ha. He can only say ha, ar rahman, ar rahman, even though it gives a bad meaning. But for himself to read for himself is okay. But he cannot go and lead salah in the presence of someone who knows better than him. And he cannot sit and teach people. Unless else also 
everyone else is, is uh, in recitation worse than him. The second category, as you can see, Sifat al huruf Sifat al we have two Sifat. You see here, this is the first type of Sifat, and this is the second type. The first type, Sifat those sifat that when they are changed or not applied, they will change the letter into another letter. Just like these, just like the maharit proof exactly, the ruling of these sifat. Means you have to apply it and skipping it is haram totally. We say the same exceptions about that we said about Mukhar al Now, sifat, the second type of sifat, as you can see, sifatun tazyiniyatun tahsiniyya. Decorative, beautifying sifat, improving sifat. Like sifat, we use it just to improve the sound of the letter, to decorate it, to beautify it. And here we have how many cases? Two cases. The first case, if we are reading this, or if we are reading the Quran, in order to get the license or the ijazah. So when we are reading for the ijazah, we are passing the Qur'an to the, to the next generation. We are transferring the Qur'an. In that case, applying every single tajweed rule, not only sifat, the decorative sifat, all tajweed rules without exception, applying them is mandatory. And skilling them is forbidden. Why? Because then you will be lying in your narration. The second case is when you're reading normally as a person, not for an ijazah, and not teaching, you're not teaching the right recitation of the Quran. If you're just reading normal reading. So I can add here, when you're teaching as a teacher, and teaching someone who is memorizing the Quran, this is, please add this note and keep it in your mind. And Shaykh Ahmed did not mention it here, but it has the same ruling in my opinion. If someone is teaching, right, like we teach in the Hafd school, is it permissible for us just to teach the kids just those main maharij and sifat and just forget about qalqala, just forget about tafkhim and tarqiq, just let them memorize خالدين فيها وبالباطل and قل الله and these things is that okay? That's not okay. I do I never ever see this as permissible because you're teaching these they're these gonna be hafal means they're gonna transfer the Quran to others, teach others, lead salah and and also might try to get an ijazah. So it's not permissible for you to skip these rules, right? You have to teach them the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it. So please add this note, even though it's not here. So it's, it's, it's very important and required for all Tajwi, all uh, have the schools, and all those who are teaching the recitation of the Quran to others, to apply and to teach them all of the Tajweed rules. But of course, how do you teach them? Right, sister? How do you teach them? Gradually. You start with what is most important. Huh? I don't want a teacher on the Sunday school or the summer program teaching uh, Idram, and still the students don't apply, uh, don't pronounce the Bukharish correctly, right? Or don't uh, apply heaviness and lightness for the ta and the ta correctly. No, we start with the foundation, then we teach the decorative rules and the beautifying rules. Is that clear? Now, the, the last section is those who are reciting the Quran as you can see here, ala sabili tilawati means just normal recitation. They are just reciting normally for themselves. Here we have two, two options or two possibilities. Someone who knows these rules and someone who don't. So who doesn't? Someone who knows these rules 
the decorative rules, the idram, ikhfa, qalqala, the rules that don't change the meaning. And he knows them, but he doesn't apply them. That is not acceptable of him. That is dislike. And someone who doesn't know them, he lost, both of them lost the reward, okay? Both, both of them lost the reward and, and, and left what is best. But of course, the one who learned the rules and not applying them is more responsible than the one who did not. And we urge all people and all Muslims to learn all the Tajweed rules, right, sister? Learn all the Tajweed rules and try to recite the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it. As mentioned in some of the, of the traditions that are attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ أَنْ يُقْرَأَ الْقُرْآنُ كَمَا أُنْزِلُ That Allah loves that you recite the Quran as He revealed it. That Allah loves that you recite the Quran as He revealed it. Then who are we? SubhanAllah, some scholars, if you hold a subha, he tells you this is bid'ah. And this is ignorance, of course. Any person who says subha is bid'ah is ignorant. Because, like even in the time of Sahaba, some of the companions, they used to have a robe or a thread that has some knots. I mean, even if you want to take things literally, there were some people who were doing something similar in the time of the Prophet even though not everything the Prophet ﷺ did not do is necessarily a bid'ah that is rejected. So these people, they say, even this is a bid'ah. Everything for them the Prophet did not do is a bid'ah But when it comes to reciting the Qur'an, they tell you, oh, not necessarily to learn tajweed, not necessarily. SubhanAllah, see how this mentality If you don't know Tajweed, then you tell people it's not necessary to learn Tajweed. Especially some, you know, some of those sheikhs in Saudi Arabia particularly, where they give their fatwas about everything for them is bid'ah. Not all of them, I'll say, huh? Most of them. Everything is bid'ah for them, in general. But when it comes to reciting the Quran, say, oh, you don't have to apply Tajweed. SubhanAllah, did not the Prophet ﷺ recite this way? Did not the Muslim scholars dedicate their whole lives? Those Tajweed and Quran teachers spent their whole lives in the masajid and the, the katatib and the schools passing the Quran exactly as the Prophet ﷺ passed it to them. And you say, it's not necessary. You don't have to. So they, they discourage, if you like, they discourage and they uh, don't give Tajweed its correct, they don't put it in its correct status. That's not acceptable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and guide them and guide all of us. So, this is the detailed rulings of learning, of learning Tajweed. Any question about anything? Any question about anything? SubhanAllah, yani, these Tajweed rules, brothers and sisters, Wallahi, they're, they're one of the miracles of the Qur'an. See, even though they don't change the meanings, like Idram, Ikhfa, look, look at the precision through which the Qur'an is being transferred. Even these, the, the length of the letter, the prolongation of the letter, all these detailed rules that don't change the meaning in any way. Still, the Muslims are very those who care, and the, the true Qur'an teachers, they don't tolerate those mistakes. How amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved this Qur'an. Not only the words, not only the meanings, but also the sounds of the Qur'an are preserved. Wallahi guys, if you understand this topic, and you explain to your friends, this in itself is a miracle that should attract people to this great religion. That our book not only preserved in its letters and meanings, even in its sounds, even how long you stretch a letter is preserved. Love. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hijr, right? Chapter 15, verse 9. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu nahabu. It is we who reveal this reminder or this book and surely we will definitely preserve it. And if the scholars did not take care of all of these rules and the Mkharij and the Tajweed rules, then the words of the Qur'an would have been changed. This is why Imam 
Imam al-Shatibi radiallahu anhu, who passed away in the year 590 after the migration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wrote a shatibiya which is about thousand verses, a shatibiya, thousand verses of poetry in the seven qiraat, in the seven qiraat. What does he say in his introduction? He says very nice verses, very nice. He says, Jazallahu bil khayrati anna a'immata lana naqalu al-Qur'ana abban wa salsala faminhum wudurun sab'atun qad tawassatat, qad tawassatat. He's saying, may Allah reward with goodness those Imams who transferred the Qur'an to us as if it's fresh, with ease, as if it is fresh, as if, as if it has just been revealed, means with precision and with also with ease. جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إمة لنا نقل القرآن عبا وسلسة. then he says فمنهم بدور سبعة and among those قراء and إمام there are seven who are like the moons. he is describing them like the moons. فمنهم بدور like بدر plural of بدر. قد توسطت سماء العلا والعدل زهرة وكمل. they are in the in the sky of highness and 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 justice. With the beauty and with perfection, Subhanallah. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward them and raise their levels and accept accept their efforts. So this is the first line. By this we finish the first line. وَالْأَخْذُ بِالتَّجْوِيدِ حَتْمُ الْلَّازِمُ مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ The summary of مَنْ لَمْ يُصَحِّحِ الْقُرَانَ آثِمُ The one who does who makes who makes mistakes that change the meaning or the Arab is a sinner unless Huh? Unless he exerts all his efforts and tries to learn but cannot learn and cannot change those mistakes. Then we tell him, okay, Allah is Ghafoor Rahim, Allah will not overburden you, will not bring you to account since you did your best, but don't teach and don't lead. Okay? Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'i wa alhamdulillahi 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 wa alh